When I was younger, you'd hear about the girl who walked into the woods one night and never walked out. The old folks in town say there's something in there. The Watcher. The last one like you, she disappeared. What sort of person are you? Do you sense things? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. It's not the woods whispering to you. It's the Watcher. joining us thank you. thank you now that just gave me the creeps i think that's the point though right that is the <laughs> point that is what we want that is the intended um uh reaction so yeah this is uh this is our new little movie so oh, i'm so excited for people to see it too we're having a little screening tomorrow night in my hometown so i'm so excited to see it on a big screen with all my friends there and see the reactions and it's gonna be awesome let's talk about this process though because this is a movie that you've been wanting to remake so there's a 1980 movie has everyone seen the original Watcher in the Woods? I hope so. It's a cult classic. It is. Well, and that's the thing. People, with the original Watcher, it's like people either are like, oh my gosh, that is, was my first horror film. I saw it at a slumber party. I never watched, you know, I, I, I remember being terrified. Or they don't have a memory. They don't, they never saw it. Yeah. They never heard of it. So it's like one or the other. <laughs> yeah. And it's based on, the original is based on a book. But the original movie's a little different than the book was, correct? Yeah, the book had a lot of sci-fi elements to it. And so the first movie, they tried to stay true to that. And I think it got a little um, confusing. And so they actually, when Disney released the original movie, they um, pulled it out of the theaters two weeks later and redid the ending. Because yeah. it was getting panned so much for the original ending. And then they... Um, and exactly. then they, three endings to they, the original they only film. aired two of them, right? So two of them were on in the film. And then um and then they yeah, they didn't know what to do with it really. And then so we just changed it completely. Our writer Scott Abbott had a great take on it. Um and really made it more of a gothic ghost story as opposed to a um sci adding a sci-fi element to it. Yeah. So on this movie, you know, was the start this was the last first and last horror movie that Disney ever did. After that they just uh, developed Touchstone because it, they felt it wasn't part of their brand. So this was something that they weren't really good at doing, and it was a, a challenge for them. Yeah. So we decided. Well, yeah, to it wasn't really. It's you don't think of it as Disney, you know. So it became so Touchstone. I mean, I think it was this and Escape to Wish Mountain, right? So, um, and those were the two sort of entry level horror films for kids in the '80s. So. Um, and, you know, for me, I mean, I was only four in 1980, so it was after that that I found it, and we were just obsessed with it as a family. And I, we always loved, and our company, Heartbreak Films, is all about, um, we always try to find projects that adults and kids can watch together. We don't want, you know, the thing where the kids go in the bedroom and watch something, and the parents are watching, and, you know, like, we want to be able to bring families together through something, and I think that a movie like this can do that. Because Disney, uh, I can't see it making horror movies. Like, what was that like growing up watching Watcher in the Woods as a kid, but it's a Disney horror movie? I don't think I really <laughs> knew it was Disney, but, you know, Disney back then was, you know, it was, it was princesses, it was Snow White, you know, it was Bambi, that kind of thing. So, um, a lot of... Bambi's a horror movie, too. Oh, I think it's... <laughs> yeah, I think it Disney has a lot of horror in it, to be Actually, honest. I think now that Dumbo I think is it. the worst. I think Dumbo tops Bambi and Fox and the Hound. Those are the two... Everyone always says Bambi, but Bambi actually is beautiful. It's all that orchestra to the... You don't actually see the mom... Die. Like, you know, Lion King's a lot freakier. Or I was gonna say, Nemo. Lion King's bad, too. They, the barracuda eats the mom and all the babies. Like, oh come on. God. And Nemo goes missing. Like, yeah, but just... Dumbo is such a bummer. Yeah. Dumbo is like, oh my gosh, that poor thing is tortured. He's put into makeup. He's made to fly. He's like... Put him in a cage. They, they put his mom in a cage. They get yeah. him drunk. I mean, it was like... Until the, until the last 30 seconds of that movie, it's just... 
torturous, like this. We haven't even gotten to Pinocchio. That's I another know. one. Oh, Pinocchio <laughs> gives you nightmares. <laughs> the whale. Yeah. Maybe maybe Disney should rebrand. I mean, <laughs> it's seeming a little more hard. You've got to kill off the parents. Yeah. In this one, we don't kill off the parents. We kill off the kids. Yeah. So, you know, a little different. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> so nobody dies. No, nobody dies. <laughs> nobody dies. We find them. Oh. <laughs> Some of them. So the ending, was that like, did that make you nervous though that Disney had to redo the ending? Something about like the monster didn't look like how... Yeah, so they had an yeah. alien and I think they did Jim Henson. It was like some sort of puppet um, alien thing, which didn't Not work. So Henson, then they did a re... It wasn't Henson. Then they redid it and the one that I saw growing up was um, using like light sources, yeah. just like light, like as if it's coming from a mothership or a spirit or something. So... Um, we just really wanted to do, we wanted to make the movie kind of more complete, you know, really explain what happened. Um, in the original one, it's a seance and all this sort of stuff. This one, we, we explain who the watcher is and what it wants. So that was the biggest challenge in making this film was who is the watcher? I just found an email from the writer, Scott Abbott, who sent me this whole thing when we were just developing the story about who is the watcher. And we had to determine who that watcher was. So that was we the hardest back, we, part. We bring in some gothic. I mean, we bring in like the 1600s and the plague and stuff like that into it. So, um, but we stay true to a lot of the stuff that I didn't watch the movie again um, for like decades. And I, we wanted to get the rights 19 years ago. We tried to get the rights so I could play Jan. But then by the time that many years, it took 17 years to get yeah. the rights. And by the time we did, I was too old to play Jan, too young to play Mrs. Aylwood. <laughs> so I had to direct it. So, um, you know, I mean, what else could I do? But, but it, was, it was really fun. I mean, this is the first thing I've ever directed that I'm not in, which was really fun for me to be in my wellies in Wales with the rain pouring down in the cow farm, you know, at a, on a cow farm in the woods in the back. Like, it was amazing. It was really one of the most exciting and, and creatively fulfilling um, projects of my career. But, um, and if they ask me to do a sequel, I am there, like, next week. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it was so much fun. But at the same time, like, directing and acting is, it's really hard to kind of do both. But yeah, we try, we try to get the rights for 17 years and then um, we finally got them and here we are. So, I, I mean, but the thing, oh, so I was saying the movie, I, when I watched it as a kid, I watched it so many times that it was ingrained in my head. And I really didn't want to go back. We had our own script written and, and we knew what we were doing with this movie and we had scouted the locations and done this amazing casting and, um, and then two days before we started filming, I finally watched the original with my son, who was 10 at the time. I sat down with him in Wales on a couch, and I said, let's watch this movie together. And we watched it, and he was freaked out, and he was in awe of the movie. And I was like, okay, this is going to be good. Like, I'm excited now that it still holds up, that, you know, that um, with a little bit of updating and some story stuff, we can really... What, what he loved about it and what we kept true to was the watcher is... It's the POV of the camera. The watcher is watching... Uh, we're watching the people that he's watching, right? We're seeing it through his eyes. So the only other movie I can really think of that did it really well in the 80s was Jaws, mm -hmm. right? But it was a device we used a lot back then, and it's a device that's been, like, overused, I feel like, now. And with sophisticated audiences, even my, you know, nine-year-old is, you know, more sophisticated than I was at nine, so I was afraid that device might not work anymore, so I tested it out on my kids, and they still got freaked out by it. I was like, it still works. So, yeah. yeah. So did you guys keep any of those, like, iconic moments from the film, like the, I think it's like the blindfold or the, the NERC on the um, window, Narek, or did yeah. you do any of that? NERC is in there. Um, it's a different kind of NERC, but NERC is there. Um, Instead we, of a blindfold, we use a gag. Yeah, that was a last minute decision. I was like, we have to have something. It's not scary enough without something um, kind of binding her, you know? I was gonna have her all tied up actually at first, and <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, so then, um, the funhouse mirrors. The funhouse mirrors. So that was a part of it. Yeah, there's, they're done in a different way in this. And um, I mean, you kind of saw a little bit of it in the preview there, yeah. where, where she appears in numerous different mm -hmm. sort of uh, reflective surfaces. Yeah. So how did you kind of want to update it, um, you know, for audiences now? Did you guys do, you mentioned the script and how you changed a little bit of the story. But what else will stick out to audiences that it seems more of our time? Well, do you want to... You know, it's really, there's no technology. It's not like everybody's on cell phones. We never used a cell phone in, in the movie, except to shoot an underwater sequence. Yeah, I did use my iPhone to shoot a scene underwater, um, which is actually one of the iconic scenes from the old movie where she's underwater. Um, so there's a few parts of the movie that I wanted to stay true to, but 
really, it's just... It's I mean, not really an updating, it's a reimagining. It's a reimagining. And so it's really just a gothic horror film. It's not a splatter, it's not a gore, it's not, you know, it's not anything that's going to keep you up at night. It's just going to scare you while you're watching it, you know, that kind of thing. So just a lot of jump scare type stuff. Um, we stayed true to the stuff in the original. There's a lot of animals that kind of freak you out. So we have some animals in this. <laughs> you know, we were in Wales, so there were a lot of animals. So that was good. That's so <laughs> cool, was shooting in Wales. What was that experience like? Yeah, well, the house yeah. is actually, it was Agatha Christie's house. So where we had our offices, so the main house we shoot in, but where we had our offices is where she wrote a lot of her, her novels. That's so cool. It was really little cool. fun fact. Yes, little fun fact. Yeah. And the other house, because we used two houses. Uh, you'll, we mix and match. We mix and match. It's the same, the family still lives in the same house, but the dining room is in a different, actual d different building than the, uh, the living room. Mm -hmm. It's actually two different homes that we used, but one of the houses was haunted. I had a little girl. What? And she turned on a light while I was, I was like, there was, yeah, I opened up this closet and I couldn't see anything and I was with someone else and I was like, can't see anything in here. Hey, if only the little girl was here to help us out and all of a sudden the light came on. Oh well, the, Ooh, we, we okay. had been warned about this little girl. The house was, part of the house was built in 1438 mm -hmm. and that's when part of our story takes place, the 1400s, uh, back during the, the plague. And part of the house was actually built at that time, but this little girl lived around 1900 in the home. And uh, she was never allowed outside of the home, and they had a photo of her. But there were numerous sightings of her o over the times, and then she helped Melissa a turn a light on. Yeah, a lot of electricity stuff going on. So let's <laughs> just say you guys believe in ghosts, because like, that just creeped me sort out. Sort of. Yes and no. I go yeah. back and forth. Yeah. I'm not really sure. What do you guys think? Spirits. Um, what was this like to shoot? So you've, you've directed before. You directed some, was it Sabrina the Teenage Witch? I directed Sabrina. That, whatever that show was. Yeah, yeah, that one. Nobody knows what that, that one. Is, yeah. Nah. <laughs> and then, but this is totally different. To shoot uh, and direct a horror movie, you have to have, um, you know, kind of a different vision. Yeah, I did a lot of like, you know, um, ever since I've had children, 11 years now, I haven't really watched that much horror because it's not something I really want to, I don't really want to think about mortality now that I have children. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't like, all that stuff, and I can't watch it really around them anyway. So watching, so preparing for this, I started watching. I watched a lot of Hitchcock, um, just to see how you know one of the old masters did it. Um, and then I tried to find other movies that were in this genre of ghost story, and there's really not that many. It was really hard to find. So I ended up kind of watching a lot of movies in the daylight. I wouldn't do it at night. Yeah. Um, once the sun started to go down, I'd call her and be like, "You want to go to dinner? Can we go to dinner? I gotta get this out of my head before I go to bed tonight." Um, Anybody see the orphanage? The orphanage. That one got me. That one. Or the others. Uh, others. I was the others say, and is orphanage real and uh, woman in black. I think is the one with. Um, I watched pieces of some of them too. Like yeah. where I just where I'd, I'd fast forward to like a scary part and I'd watch it over and over again to see how they did it. Did you watch the Babadook? <laughs> no. That's scary. Have you guys seen the Babadook? Really? Oh yeah. I auditioned for it when I was little and that scared the what? crap out of me. So I was you know I don't even think I said them. I don't think I saw the movie. I only know it from the script. <laughs> From reading the script, like the scene. It was the most happened. terrifying script I ever read. Yeah. yeah, and now it's back. I know. You should I have been in the new one. I won't go see. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, I think there's going to be another it too, where it's like the adults. There is, yeah. Yeah, come on, Melissa I do love me some Stephen King. So that's actually something I would, yeah, I would love to do some Stephen King. Do you like being behind the camera as much as you like being in front? I like mixing it up. Yeah. So I went from doing that to doing a Christmas movie last year for Hallmark called uh, Broadcasting Christmas, and it was so nice to be not have to make any decisions and just do a wardrobe fitting and then say my lines. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a nice break. <laughs> and this but it's is funny because be she says that now when we were shooting Watcher, she said, oh, it's so nice not to have to sit in a makeup <laughs> hair chair and get all not done up. Learn my I don't have to learn lines. And I get to make all the decisions. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, I'm tired. She doesn't know <laughs> I what want, she wants. I want to act. <laughs> no, I like mixing it up. You know, I think that that's what keeps it interesting. And that's why I'm in this business. You know, I'm not in this business because I like to you know, do the same thing over and over again. You know, actors like to explore and play around. And, and directing is more creatively fulfilling for me, for sure. Um, you know, getting to read a script and decide, based on my vision in my head, what I want it to look like on the screen, based, based on what's around, what, what, what I have available to me, what kind of locations, what kind of actors, what, you know, you might have something in your head, but you have to recreate it based on what's available. And, um, but it's so much fun to be able to put those pieces together. And I learned very early on that part of directing is just making really quick decisions. Yeah. Like, I can't tell you, on the first movie I directed, it was called Santa Con. It was for a Christmas movie for Lifetime. Um, they said it was like one of the only, out of 100 plus movies that Christmas, it was the only one centered around a male, uh, a male, male character. Wow. 
And uh, I, re I remember this conversation about what kind of bag he would carry. Yeah. Would it be a duffel? Could it be an army bag? Should it be a rolly bag? How big should it be? How small, what color? Is, if it's black, is it gonna, it, we're shooting this at night, right? Is that gonna, fade? should it be like bright red or is that too Christmassy? Can we put lights on it? Like what, it, <laughs> you know, this, this talk about this bag went on for two days and I was like, it's small conversations like that that can eat up a film <laughs> where you don't get to actually make the film because you're so busy, busy worried about like, what time should the, the watch be set to? Or, you know, what should our hair look like in this? Or in this case, it was about a, the biggest production problem here was about a pond, trying to find a pond near a tree that was deep enough and safe enough for an actress to fall into. Um, you know, how, how are we gonna film that? Where are we gonna film it? How, can we film underwater there? Can we film above the water there? You know, how do we tie it in with the, the scenery and the actors? And that was the biggest trouble with this one. But other than you that- You found a pond, did you? We built a pond. We you dug built it. it. We dug it, a man named Fletch, a wonderful, wonderful guy who saved the day constantly on the set, <laughs> was in this pond, like dredging it out every day, lined it, and he was filling it up with other pond water he was bringing in by hose. Um, so he like had a little siphon going on situation because every day it would drop a few inches and we'd have to fill it up again. And so it, it was it was a little bit of a process. That was the biggest Fletch challenge. Fletch to the rescue. Fletch, I love that guy. <laughs> art department, anybody? Yeah. Anybody in art department? Art department's yeah, awesome. They don't get enough I love working with the art department, yeah. Um, speaking of the cast, Angelica Houston's in this, guys. Like Oscar winner, amazing. Um, how did you nab her for this movie, Paula? I asked her. <laughs> Like, hey, Angelica, what's up? I sent her the script. She said yes, like, in 24 hours. That's awesome. And then so, I freaked out. Yeah, what was it like directing her? Because, I, you know, I it's... I my pants. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I, um, <laughs> I, yeah, no, it was, it was interesting. You know, you, I realized very quickly I had to get my head around, you know, what am I going to do? But when you have someone of that caliber, you don't have to worry about that element. This is taken care of. Now, what am I going to do with the rest of it, you know? Especially um, working with kids. And working with kids. And, and then we had a little one who was new to the industry, Dixie, who had to do the NAREC, screaming yeah. NAREC, which was her. She had a hard time with that. So she would giggle and be like, NAREC. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 you're possessed. Yeah. <laughs> so trying to explain that to, uh, what was she, like 10? <laughs> Yeah, no, I actually ended up clearing the room and screaming at her and letting her scream back at me. And we screamed at each other until she was comfortable screaming it. And then we called the crew back in and rolled the camera. And I was like, yell at me, yell at me. Scream, just look straight through me and just scream Narak as loud as you can. And, I, and every time she would like start to drop her volume and be like, Narak, Narak, Narak. I'd be like, Narak! And she'd be like, Narak! <laughs> so it, it got good. But um, it was... Uh, you know, when you hire someone like Angelica Houston and you just kind of like let her be the piece of the puzzle that she is, you're not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be like, what's your backstory here? Yeah. Um, so, you know, just kind of let her be her. The only thing I felt like I had to do was kind of keep her on the story track. Like, oh, well, in this scene, you're running to the woods after, after this scene, you're gonna go to the woods. So keep up the energy and, you know, you're standing and we're moving, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. I mean, these kids are lucky to have you as like a little coach because she's <laughs> the queen of child acting. They're all gonna be huge stars. I mean, Tallulah Evans is fantastic. She's like, I mean, in my mind, she's Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, like, she's a young she's Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. Nicholas Gelzatine, he is, he's in New Zealand doing movie after movie right now. He's, he's super in talented. a ton now. He's in so a bunch cute. of movies. What a cute guy. Yeah, so, I mean. As soon then, as he auditioned, I said to Melissa, that's the guy, because this is the guy every girl is going to want. She insisted. She's said, like, you he have is to, so We cute. have to have him. Yeah. <laughs> and now look, you were right. And he's really, really, they're all really, really talented. She was fantastic. Um, yeah, this, this girl, girl who played Karen, I can't think of her name. Terrible. Anyway, uh, first movie. Uh, she had never worked before. She was really good. She was amazing. Really, really kind of haunting presence. And the little girl Dixie, who plays Ellie, was great. She's I mean, going she into fantastic. a She's doing a whole bunch of stuff, yeah. too. I mean, it was a, to pull talent out of London was amazing, yeah. to be able to be over in Wales and be able to pull from the talent in Are London. People coming from Downton Abbey and yeah. Doctor Who yeah, and all these yeah. big, big shows coming to do this little movie. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I want to go to, like go back to Downton Abbey time and let's bring that show back. That's a great show. <laughs> Already? Yes. Oh well, Wait, everything's what, a reboot. Everything's a reboot. Yeah. yeah. We'll have Someone a new said, version of it. So yeah, there you go. Someone said that um, uh, American Idol's coming back. I'm like, was it gone? It is. I, it was gone for like four months. Yeah. Four months. That's yeah, about it. About yeah. That. That's when they were like, we're a hiatus. It. Yeah. They're like, we don't need it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we but can what we do months. need is like Clarissa explains it all Aww. and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And... Well, they're doing Sabrina without us. I heard that they're doing uh, like a like a teen of Riverdale. Soap. Yeah, they're, they're doing like a teen back. soapy version yeah. of uh, like dark. a drama. Yeah, like a drama soap. Opera. I hear it's going to be very dark. So. Yeah, so ours was ours was obviously a comedy. You know, it was like a light comedy no. about magic. Yeah, <laughs> theirs is going to be like more witchcraft. 
uh, I think it's going to be much more like teen soapy kind of thing. More like Charmed, know. probably. Or Buffy, yeah. Maybe. yeah. Buffy. I think they want it to be like a counterpart to Riverdale, which is like a part of yeah. the Archie comics. Yep. Um, and and it's part of the yeah, it's part. It's one of the newer well, Archie. Sabrina, comics. Is, you know, was in one comic book a year. Uh, during the 60s and 70s, they had one issue at Halloween every year that was the Sabrina Archie comic. But otherwise, she was a very minor character in, in the Archie comics. Yeah, she was just sort of like a you know, little section in the comic book. There'd be a few pages on her. Well, they got to bring you back because you're the Sabrina expert. We need you on that show, right, That's guys? Not up Let's to start me. a petition. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're going to do that, I'd rather it be for SNL like Betty White got. <laughs> Because you had um, Melissa and Joey, which recently yeah. ended, right? 2015. Yeah, two years ago, yeah. So what's up? Uh, do you want to find a new TV role? Or are you excited that to would be? I mean, ideally, and... I would like to be able to balance it out with directing like one or two a year movies, one or two a year, and then be able to have a sitcom again. I love doing sitcoms. I love making people laugh. I love being at work and laughing. <laughs> like, you know, there's, there's nothing better than that. Like having to do episodes of Law and & Order and whatnot, you're like... I can't live like this. I have to think about rape every day. I can't do this. It is tearing me apart. Uh -huh. So, you know, to be able to laugh and have fun at work is super important to me. And then be able to be, you know, um, creative and, and storytelling and all that with, uh, you know, all encompassing. I mean, she loves editing. I'm not a big fan of editing, but I love um, music composition with a movie. Like, I love sound design and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, she loves scouting. I'm not so into scouting. She scouts, and then I go say yes or no. <laughs> That's why you're a good team. We're do you like team. working together as mother and daughter? No, we hate is, it. Do you guys ever fight or bicker? We do fight. Never. Yeah. We no. do fight on occasion, but I have to say that we've been working together for 37 years. Wow. Long time. We've been partners. And you kind of helped uh, Melissa get into the the industry to begin with, right? Because you wanted to do commercials? Yeah, I was yeah. like, I want to be on TV. And she she wanted to okay. be on TV. Anybody know what Romper Room is? Yes. Yes. All right, Melissa wanted to be on Romper well, Room. Well, I had a very specific reason. They would never say the name Melissa. It wasn't Miss a popular Miss Marianne name. would Romper Bumper Stomper Do, and she never said, and I see Melissa. So I figured I figured out the, the, that the idea was if you were in the audience, if you were part of the show, she would say your name. So I had to be on the show for her to say Melissa. So I said, I have to be on TV. Couldn't get her on Romper Room. Never got a Romper Room. That's how it started. Maybe that's the reboot. Now, are your kids at all interested in following in your footsteps? Uh, for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So I'm not going to let them do that. <laughs> like for the that. wrong reasons. Because they're like, well, you didn't go to college, so I'm just going to... I'm like, actually, I went to NYU for seven years, never graduated. But some, someday, I, it's my plan. I'm in continuing ed right now for Italian classes. We'll, we'll see how that works out. I don't think I'm going to, you know, get any kind of degree in Italian. But, um... I, uh, you know, so he's like, you didn't go to college, so I'll just act, too. I'm like, oh, that's how it works. Yeah, just act. That's great. Just do that. I'm sure nobody's thought of that before. <laughs> but have they watched your stuff, at least? Pretty much no. No? <laughs> Her kids no. are not fans. Um, no, but they don't, it's weird for them. You know, I think it's a different generation, too. They see their friends on YouTube channels, and they watch themselves on selfie video. You know, they, they're making their own movies on their iPads. My son does this whole Lego stop action. He makes his own Lego movies. And, um... I think that it's not as special as it used to be yeah. to be on TV. You know, like, it's, they're like, yeah, great, that's you. Okay, awesome. We're all, like, little celebrities in our own, right? Yeah. We're, like, taking selfies. Taking selfies. And, and, yeah. and, yeah, and I've been saying a lot recently that actually I think uh, that hopefully that's going to get more women into film school. I'm hoping that things like selfies and filters and playing around with, with the technology we have available at our fingertips, that hopefully that's going to put more women in film school and especially behind the camera as far as cinematography goes. So yep. I think um, hopefully more lenses and filters and camera angles and lighting and sound this, design. And this film, we had a very female extremely uh, crew. Female. So we had... Not only director, a very female cast. Yeah. And a female director, a female producer, besides our other local producers, as were, well as our camera department were female. Wow. Not our DP. Not our DP, but our, but our, our camera loaders, camera, yeah. our, our first AC. And then our uh, Which first is really, AD, really rare. Our first assistant director, first which is really rare as well. Um, a lot of a lot of women. A lot on the of set, women. So on good. Other than Fletch, who saved the day with the pond. Fletch, yeah. But <laughs> well, that deserves a round of applause because we need to get more women behind the camera. Yeah, and we will. But I do want to open it up to these lovely yeah, individuals okay. for some questions. Here we Hi. Go. Hi. Um, you mentioned uh, rain, and uh, what was the conditions? Like shooting outside, was it difficult to shoot? Well, so outside? luckily, this one here was afraid of shooting in the dark in the woods. So even though 90% the of the woods are scary, 90% of the movie takes place in the, at nighttime. 
but we were able to do day for night, so it was great because we were able to shoot all day, have normal hours, not have to do these weird late night shoots where you're just dragging and then you know, the next day you have to get up. Night you know, shoots suck. Yeah, night shoots just wreck a crew, right? They just they just eat away at your crew. And um, and so it was great that we were shooting during the day, but it did rain almost every day. But it was that kind of light, you know, the kind of thing you think of a British rain, like just a light dusting of rain all day long. But It also was very the, atmospheric. It was. It was really nice. But we did smoke the woods, but it kept the the like humidity or whatever kept the smoke in the woods. Yeah. Um, Fletch did the smoke too. So a little interesting piece of information. Some of the scenes that you'll see when you, if you watch the movie, uh, when we shot one half of it, it was sunny. And then when we came back the next day to shoot another day, it was cloudy and rainy. So I had to replace all the sky. Yeah. So a lot of the sky replacement is a lot is of special fake. effects in this that it don't have to do There are blue skies that, that were not there. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here that you wouldn't think is special effects that is special effects, like the night for day stuff. That the fact that the moon is actually the sun, <laughs> you know, things like that. So and the, the sky replacement stuff and whatnot. But um, we added a few birds here and there. <laughs> but um, otherwise, I would say the conditions were pretty good. I mean, it, when it was raining and we were in the woods, which we were in the woods for a solid nine days, I think it was. Yeah. Um, the canopy of the trees kept it off of us. So it was really, it wasn't, it was damp, but it wasn't, we weren't soaking, we weren't soaking wet. Yeah. But I did wear my wellies and my like raincoat. Okay, and I was another, acting, I wasn't acting, so I could do that. Another little piece of information, our woods, uh, anybody a fan of uh, Star Wars? So, okay. Endor. And like Star Wars. <laughs> right, well Endor was shot a couple of miles from where we shot similar woods, almost the same Ooh. woods as where we, I wanted to shoot in the Endor woods, but it was a little, out of our price range. Yeah, yeah, so we found this that was nearby instead. But it, Endor and our woods are almost exactly the same. They're like cousins. Yeah, you yeah. gotta call up George Lucas when you wanna use those woods. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Hi ladies, how are you? Thank you for being here and congratulations on Thank everything. Uh, Melissa, you have had such um, amazing staying power and healthy success in this industry. And I think that there's several of us in this audience and on the crew as well, who've kind of grown with you and seen and enjoyed all the facets of entertainment that you've put out. And also, you haven't aged a day. <laughs> Thank you, you really look incredible. <laughs> and so I have a great I glam team back no, there. No, no, you really do. And so what I wanted to say is, is there something that you can um, share with us and tell us all about what has contributed to this very healthy success and your wellness as well? <laughs> so physical and in entertainment. Um, okay. So, I mean, you know, I'm not sure, but um, I, I think that part of why my career was the way, like, has taken the path it's taken is because I was raised in New York. Um, I think that part yeah. of that is, I do, I do. I think that that's because well, when you walk around these streets, it's not, nobody notices who you, you know, you're looking down until you have to find your street, right? So um, it, it's not like, I wasn't going to red carpet events. I wasn't going to parties. I wasn't getting dragged into things I shouldn't have been dragged into. I was able to be a kid. And um, this was another thing I did. Acting was another thing I did aside like it was like brownies and dance class and auditions you know so that was just something I did and I never thought anything more of myself because of it and I think a lot of that's because my parents wouldn't let me you know it wasn't I wasn't I wasn't anyone that was you know I just ha it's the same as if I think someone was a gymnast right and they were going constantly to competitions and going out of, out of state for things and and um, just had some sort of you know uh, skill that they were able to tap into a young talent that they were able to use and not being able to, you know, I, I never liked when people were like, oh, do you drive around in a limo? Or, you know, when you're like, when you're like in elementary school and people are like, oh, where are you going? To, you're going back to the city again? What are you going to do? What are you, are you, are you taking a limo there? Are they going to send a private jet for you? Are you, you know, you're like, mm. like no. you get a little embarrassed. You're like, yeah. shut up. No, no. Um, the best thing was that I got to wear the clothes to school the next day or whatever. If I did a Lifesavers commercial, that was awesome. That was my back-to-school clothes that, we're, that year. Like... Yeah, but I think that, you know, some of it has to do with family life. Some of it has to do with environment. I also did my first show in my teen years in Orlando instead of L.A. So the first time I ever went to a red carpet, I was probably 16 or 17, and I walked on the red carpet with... There's, there's pictures you can find of me and Jenna Vanoy and the Sister Sister Girls and um, some of the cast of Full House. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was following Jenna Vanoy, who was on Blossom. I was following her lead. She's stopping and posing for the cameras and going like, and I was like, okay, <laughs> what? <laughs> but, you know, and I think a little bit of it was, a, I, I wasn't, 
um, in that kind of environment. I wasn't being dragged to these weird parties and stuff, you know, um, kind of growing up too soon. You know, I was still riding my bike around Sayville, Long Island, and, you know, going to dance classes when I could. And Girl Scouts. Very important Girl Scouts. Um, but, yeah, so it was just another thing I did. But, you know, and then my real success, I feel like, came with, after Clarissa, Clarissa wasn't really a hit when it was on the air. Um, and nobody had basic cable, especially in New York City. No one was watching Nickelodeon. So um, it wasn't until Sabrina happened and I was 20, and I feel like I kind of had a good head on my shoulders already. And I think that the, the, the team of people that I grew up with, so the Sarah Michelle Gellers, right, and the, and the Jenna Van Noyes, and these people, even Joey Lawrence, who all grew up in this area and saw each other at auditions, we had this sort of community of actors. Um, it was very much about, like, keep working, keep working, work. You know, it's about being a, a working actor, not rich and famous. Yeah. And that was a big difference. And that's a numbers game. You know, I feel like that's something that comes with keep auditioning, keep going out there, you know, make it work and, and find other avenues. If you can't get a project, create, produce a project, you know, figure out the ways to do that and, or direct or get into, you know, a different avenue of the film industry somehow. Um, and to me and a lot of the New York actors that I grew up with, it's very much about like, just keep going, keep, because eventually you'll get a job. You know, eventually you'll figure out where you belong. Um, and I think that that was a big, big part of it. But especially just kind of staying out of L.A. Yeah, New York's so much better. The opportunities right, are there, guys? but the attitudes are different. Yeah. So You do have a good generation of actors, and you're like... Well, everyone rude. talks about the messed yeah. up ones. They're like, how'd you end up so normal? I'm like, all you hear about are the train wrecks. Yeah. You're not going to talk about the ones the that went ones. off and had a few <laughs> kids and still work, you yeah. know? So there are a lot of them. I mean, look at, like, Carrie Russell and... You know, there's a lot of people that you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, like you think about these people that have had these long careers, that have families, but they, they, they have their family life and they have their work life. And it's not that they're, you can see the people that are desperate that are trying too hard. You know, it's really got to be that you, you do it because you love it and you do it because um, it drives you. But it's, it can't be the only thing that drives you. Yeah. Well said. I think we have time for one more. Hello, ladies. Hi. I wanted to know for you, Melissa, how would you feel if your children entered into the entertainment business and how would you guide them? My son has tried, so we did, we did a family set of Walmart commercials for um, a few Christmases ago, like two, three years ago maybe now. Um, and we got to work together for two days on these five commercials that aired live during a Peter Pan, the Peter Pan Live that they did on NBC. And we did these five commercials together and even my husband was fantastic in them and he does not act. Um, <laughs> But he was working with his kids, so he liked it. You know, it was fun. Um, but my son got a little bit of the bug, and, um, and then he got called in for a really big audition for a TV show that was shooting in Vancouver. And I told my husband, I'm like, we really got to think about this, because I was doing a show in L.A. We live in Connecticut, and now he might be getting a show in Vancouver. And my husband was like, well, let's, you know, let him go in the audition and see what happens. And I was like, no, 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 no. They make you sign a contract for seven years. Like, if he goes to the audition and does Vancouver. well, yeah. he, someone's got to be in Vancouver with them. I'm in L.A. We, they go to school in Connecticut. What are we going to do? So, you know, luckily he didn't get the job. <laughs> and he didn't like the process. He was like, oh, I didn't get it? Oh, forget it. You know, kind Although of Although like he did come to me it. when we were doing Melissa and Joe, and he said, he calls me Gigi, and he said, Gigi, do you think you'd, you could give me a part? So we wrote him a part. They all did a little bit in Melissa and Joey. They did a little oh, bit in this movie. I just we directed just... a Christmas movie, and they're, they're all in it. I mean, little people. Oh, not Tucker. No, Tucker's not in it. Tucker's not in it. But what, Mason and Brady are in it. And what's it called? It. It's called A Very Merry Christmas. Yeah. November 26th on... Toy Store. La oh, Very Merry, Very Merry Toy, Toy Store. Store. <laughs> Toy Store. They just changed the They name. just changed it. It used to be called Christmas, Christmas Hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's on Life Very it's December. Merry so my boys Toy are Store. in it. But um, they... They 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 like that, but they like football and they like frog cut catching. Luckily, they're like way too. They really like frogs. They're way too distracted <laughs> to focus on any one thing right now. And if they were to do it, I would I wouldn't want to be a stage mom. Like I just did a TV show in Atlanta last weekend, and there were four little boys. And I thought about asking if my son could audition for one of the parts, but then I was like, I don't want to be a stage mom and sit with him on set and worry about him while I'm also worried about my lines and where's he and what are they doing with him and is he doing a good enough job or is it bad that I'm there with him? You know. Um, I feel like I just tried to get him into musical theater at his middle school. He just started middle school. And I tried to get him into the, uh, well, he wanted to do the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He wanted to be part of it. Then when he learned there was singing involved, he's like, I'm out. <laughs> I'll see you later. So that backed him out of it. But I'm also worried that that's going to tarnish him for even going forward in, with theater in his school. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a tricky little thing. But the thing is, like, if he's going to do that, he's got to stay in school. He's got to be good in school and get his, you know, keep up good grades and go to college at least for one year like I did. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I mean, seven years, but like at least one solid year. Yeah. And then he can decide. Yeah. 
see, the problem is his dad's a musician who didn't, who didn't finish college either. So he's like, well, neither of you finished college. And I'm like, hold on. We had careers at 17. Like, give me a, well, how four. Did you feel, how does your husband feel, though, that he doesn't want to sing in, mu in the musicals in school? <laughs> I think he's like, yeah, that's probably, well, he's actually very, very musical. Mm -hmm. He's one of the only kids that I know that can play, like, a double reed instrument. He can play the drums, the guitar, oboe, saxophone. Uh, what else? Oh, his favorite thing is the recorder, a violin. Yeah. But he, um, he's, he's really, really musical. It's kind of crazy. He has his dad's ear, but he's not happy. He doesn't like to sing, although he's trying now. But I, I, I don't know that he's the best singer. Yeah. And then my middle one. Oh, my middle one. He can't. Kind of takes after his He's mother. taking hip-hop. Nope. He's, got, he's got the middle one's getting a little. He's, he's finally found his niche, I think, with hip-hop. But music was not his thing. That's cool. You're not much like of a singer. I'm not a singer. Talent. Everyone was always like, aren't you an actress? How come you're not playing the role of Annie? And this is like in like seventh grade. And I'm like, because I don't sing. <laughs> uh, I'm the one that was going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Like, I don't want to be the one that's like, tomorrow. No, like, <laughs> I think she should. Let's get an adult Annie singing. going, right? I hate it. I'm so bad. <laughs> well, this has been so much fun. You guys have been great. I can't wait to watch the movie. It's on Saturday night, right? Saturday night, Lifetime. October 21st. Lifetime. October 21st. Um, yeah. So check it out, everybody. And I'm sure it'll play many times after that. Yep. But the but key watch is, it on Saturday. You got to DVR it, and then you got to watch Live it. Live plus three. So you got to watch it within three days, within or at three least days. hit play, so they think you watched it. Okay. <laughs> We're within doing it, guys. Days. We're it in on this. Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys so Thanks much. So much. Thank fun. you.